We're here today again talking about the carnivore diet as usual. We're always talking about that. We're always going to give you guys the information that you need to make some good choices on your food. Uh, first thing I just want to tackle is, you know, the results that people get on a carnivore diet. Somebody came in today, um, this guy, you know, just has been following along with the podcast and following along on our Instagram and stuff like that. He said every morning he drinks some sips on some black coffee, he listens to the Power Project, and he just kept hearing about fasting and he kept hearing about the carnivore diet. He's like, screw it. I'm just gonna guess and say the guy's probably in his 60s. Uh, the guy has lost 18 pounds. He's been on the carnivore diet for, he's on day 44 of the carnivore diet, just like I am. Um, and then also, he said that his wife is on like day four and she's starting to pull back on some of her diabetic medication. And these are just stories that we hear every single day. Her blood glucose is getting a little bit better. She's starting to feel a little bit better. And it's just, it happens so rapidly, it has, happens so quickly. And then with our, in our own family, you guys know some of the stories. So the results that we're getting you know, off of the carnivore diet have been huge. The results that I'm getting are, you know, when I did a bodybuilding show, I, I got down to 235 pounds. I got completely shredded and I was very, very tan. But I was also on a really large dosage of performance enhancing drugs. What? I know, I'm sorry. You didn't tell me. Off the family? Out of the I family? Out of the family. So that's a huge factor but also i weighed every speck of food that i had you know i was on a very strict regimen i couldn't even live my life i couldn't do anything it I was even brutal to watch it <laughs> yeah i couldn't i right it's brutal for everybody like my wife hated it my wife's like this is the last time you're ever going to do this right you know <laughs> she was really she really was worried she really thought like she may have lost me there for a minute because i was going in so deep but i just wanted to do the best job that i possibly could and represent myself the best i possibly could and, and how'd you do and get in the best shape that I could. I thought I did well. Well, you yeah. won. Yeah, I thought I did well. <laughs> yeah, I, I won, awesome. you know. I, I did get some of what I what I wanted out of it, but my point is, is that the results from the carnivore diet that I've gotten is that I can be on this diet and it's super manageable for me, and at any time that I want, I can get in similar shape to that show. I don't know if I can identify, I don't know if I can nail down being exactly that fit without doing any cardio because I was doing 90 minutes of cardio a day for that. And, but I was just, I was super like calorie restricted. I was always hungry and stuff. And with this diet, I'm not feeling any of that. So the results are, I get the opportunity to eat. I get to enjoy a lot of the foods that I like. I get to be social. He and I can go out for a burger at any time we want. We can go to In-N-Out or we can go for some steaks. Um, I can hang out with my family a lot easier. I'm a lot, um, it's just a lot easier to be social with people. So. The results for me are, it's not like a big showcase of like weight loss or anything like that. Um, it's given me a ton of energy. All of a sudden out of nowhere, I started running recently and I feel like I can be in a similar shape to what I was on, a, uh, on the stage for bodybuilding and still, you know, get in the gym, train hard and still be able to train heavy. It's just so easy. And, you know, I first went on, it's funny because I first went on a carnivore diet back in 1993 or 94, some, somewhere in there. I know I was still back, still on it in 1995 mm -hmm. because I competed in the California State Championships and I won the California State Championships. I competed with uh, Mike O'Hearn. I didn't, I didn't beat him, he was in different weight class, obviously. Um, but I competed along with him. He was mm -hmm. my training partner, Ron Fedko was my other training partner. But the thing I really liked about carnivores, think about it, I was like 22, 23 years old um, and I did carnivore uh, on a budget, mm -hmm. I had no money. Like when I talk about like having no money, like I had no money because I was in college. I was, you know, trying to uh, eat every day right. and trying to, you know, trying to have fun and do whatever. But like I worked at the school bar and I also was the busiest I've ever been and I've never had more energy. So I was young, so I could take mm -hmm. a beating back then. But the things that I was able to do, like I would get up in the morning and drive to Gold's Gym and, and train with like Ron and Mike O'Hearn. Mm -hmm. I would go to school from like 11 to about like five or 6 p.m. at USC Film School, which is really, really hard, it's not yep. easy. And then after that, I would go work at the school bar from like nine o'clock to two o'clock. Mm. You even worked there with me for a little while. Nine o'clock. And then five. get right back up and be at Gold's Gym at eight o'clock in the morning again. Mm -hmm. All while just eating red meat and water, you know? And it wasn't hard, it was actually, it kind of gave me something to believe in. And I was saying this yesterday, we have a kid in here that struggles with his mental health. And I said, listen, buddy, sometimes all you're gonna have is this diet. Mm -hmm. Like the lowest I've ever been, sometimes that's all I think about is like, well, I still got this diet. 
and it just keeps me on track and it, it gives me something to believe in that's kind of bigger than me, you know? Yeah, no, I think the results are, you know, we're, we're seeing them come in all the time. And if you want to also follow along with Sean Baker, you know, he does a similar format where he just sits in front of a camera and he shares out all the stuff that he hears from people on Instagram. And he shares a lot of their stories, but we're like, we're not making this stuff up. We're seeing people day in and day out making great progress. I, I don't think there's a person that I can really think of, although there's always like an exception to the rule of who it like wouldn't help. And I don't know why it wouldn't help somebody. It might take a while for somebody to adjust to it, especially for somebody to all of a sudden go from eating, you know, 50 grams of protein a day to maybe eating like two or 300 grams. That might really hurt your stomach. Um, or it all of a sudden starts taking a lot of fat. That might also mess up your stomach. That also might mess up your poops. But in general, I mean, it should be, the transition should be fairly smooth. It shouldn't take a whole lot of time. You're not gonna have a huge problem with your blood glucose levels as a lot of people think. Your body's gonna be able to regulate that itself, especially without the sugar in there. It'd actually be easier for your body to manage all those things. Did you ever have a problem with the explosive diarrhea that Joe Rogan talks about? Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. And how long did that last, like a couple of weeks? No, I usually just, I mean, for me, it's lasted a few days. Um, and I've actually I, never really had it from yeah. meat. I've had it from other things like MCT oil and stuff, mm -hmm. but that's not carnivore, you know? So yeah. I, anytime I would switch from, car, like vary from carnivore a little bit. I would yeah, I don't, you know, stuff. and I don't, I've never eaten just meat because I've had meat, I've had eggs, I've had butter, um, I've had bone broth. So I don't know 100% if it was just the meat, but I think, I think it's just an abundance of, of fat and also a huge shift in hydration of the hydration of your stool and everything like that. There's lots of things moving it, moving in and out at that time. And there's also st some, some kind of animal products that do have some prebiotic fiber in it that may help, like collagen has prebiotic mm -hmm. fiber, uh, glucosamine is found in joints that has prebiotic fiber in it. So some of those things might help you too, right. just uh, not just eating a ribeye, uh, getting, you know, getting some collagen and getting some joints and, and cartilage in there is, is probably a good thing. Yeah, and we've heard people overcoming all kinds of stuff, not just being, not just people like dropping weight, but also people uh, being able to maintain healthier body weights. With my mother-in-law, she's not heavy. She just, uh, she was diabetic, and so she was able to overcome that, but she didn't need to lose weight. She actually, if anything, needed to gain a little bit of weight, and she's gained like about four or five pounds, which is a pretty big deal. You know, when you're a lighter person your entire life, she's 72 years old, so... Maybe she's gaining a little bit of muscle mass. She did start some weight training. It's given her motivation to get into other things. And then there's so many people that are overcoming autoimmune disorders. I mean, we're just seeing it all over the place. Um, people, you know, getting cured from all kinds of different things that they didn't think were possible. I think Jordan Peterson shared a story. He had a, some sort of issue with his gums. Gum disease. Yeah. His daughter had everything yeah. imaginable wrong Arth with her. Rheumatoid arthritis, all sorts of arthritic problems, uh, joint replacements at like mm -hmm. seven. She had a joint replacement at seven years old. Like I've never even heard of that. That's insane. Yeah, she had a lot of, a lot of very painful uh, issues and there's a lot of other people who have solved a lot of other problems. So the main thing is just to try to give it a shot. You know, the carnivore diet is pretty simple. You're just gonna eat meat. You can have ground beef, you can have steak. My brother said he was broke. And when you're broke, you're gonna aim a little bit more towards the ground beef, probably more like the 80-20 beef. You can't get the grass-fed stuff and all the fancy stuff. They even have a 73-27, <laughs> you know, like they even have a fatter. That sounds really gross, yeah, fatter beef. But yeah, you know, do, it, do what you have to do in order to uh, keep it within your budget. In the comments below, let us know, uh, you know how it's impacted you. Let us know what it's doing for you. Let us know, uh, you know the results that you've had. And hopefully next time we sit down, we can share some of your story on here. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you all later.